of borrowed from a few different plans and a few ideas and a few things made up. It's never actually been together before, so this is the first time. I think I have to take some length off the wings and two. actually still a little bit strong. Oh, that doesn't fit very well. Oh, I see. There's a, there's the, the wing tube. Oh! It has to be trimmed. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. This is the uh, Bill Hempel uh, cowling for the 50% cub. I actually bought, actually bought the, uh, the, Ample landing gear, struts, cowling, and wheels, uh, mostly because this was the only place you could buy such things, especially like wheels like this. It's almost impossible to find wheels this size. Uh, but um, for the price, too, I mean, there's no way I could have built uh, a beautiful cowling like that for the price I bought it for. So. Uh, I'm somewhat of a purist for building us from scratch, but I'm not insane. Perfect more Encyclopedia Britannica. That's foam? Uh, yeah, there's foam and it's just foam and balsa. Mm -hmm. But of course, the real problem is it's like engineering on the fly. Like, so how am I going to do this? Now let's get the big blob of glue out. All we are to remember is this could be sanded a bit. Other side again. We're bang on! Bang on! It's perfect. No, we're out a quarter of an inch, which is minuscule. You won't even notice it. So that's that's the distance from the tip to the no quarter of an inch. Is. Quarter of an inch is is absolutely unnoticeable, minuscule. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Never happened before. <laughs> I build basically a, a plywood, two plywood plates that'll meet you know, halfway between these. And then uh, blind that in bolts to hold it in place. So the idea being that you glue all these pieces together, and then the last thing we do is cut it apart. Uh, to tell you a little bit about the color scheme here, this is actually based uh, off a real cup um, flown by Hazel Sig. Hazel Sig is actually still alive. She's in her mid 80s, and she's uh, a bit of a pioneer. Um, in terms of aviation, certainly for, for women, um, she uh, uh, was a self-taught uh, aerobatic pilot and she bought a, uh, a very, very dilapidated uh, cub that turned out to have, uh, uh, have rats uh, have been eating at the, at the structural material. So uh, he, she and her husband actually um, uh, embarked on a rebuild, a complete rebuild of it. and. Uh, and did a what they call a clip, and um, in the clip wing process, they actually take on the full size cub, they take three feet off the off the uh, section of the wing where it uh, where it meets the fuselage. So, um, so this is a clip wing. This is a 50% plane, so clip wing. It's uh, 15 feet. It's 50%. So they did the clip, and then they. Um, did the color scheme, and I think it was her brother-in-law that did the color scheme, and and so uh, this is a rather famous uh, color scheme for for cubs. Um, uh, there's not that many pictures of the actual cub, although the Sig name, which you might recognize, her husband actually started Sig models. Covering was done. All I can say after doing that covering, I don't want to do it again. That's uh, that's enough covering. Um, it's, this is the uh, Hobby King uh, covering, which is uh, relatively inexpensive compared to uh, things like Ultra Coat. Um, it, uh, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with the, how the covering turned out, and I'm just doing some of the final touches. I haven't, I have some more windows to put in, and I have some trim pieces to complete. Um, 
around the windscreen and uh, uh, install the radio gear, batteries. I'm not, not quite sure where the center of gravity is going to be, so I'm not absolutely sure where the batteries are going to have to be located, but um, I have a drawer. I'm, I'm assumed that everything's going to have to be as far forward as possible because of the, the length of the fuselage, which is over 12 feet. So um, I'll just do the assembly here. And uh, I've been practicing, so I can actually do this part by myself. And um, there are uh, wires that, uh, plugs that I have to plug in. Um, I don't know if you can see here, but the, oh, there's, a, there's a hole in the bottom on the back end here where, the, where I put the pull-pull uh, servo for the, the rudder and also the, the, the plug. So there's a, there's a single plug for the two elevators and then a, another plug for the, uh, for the uh, uh, rudder. And uh, so after pushing it together, I've got to plug in the connections. So a bit of, it, it was a bit of an interesting engineering exercise doing the, the two-piece fuselage, but I think it worked pretty well. There's just four, uh, four bolts on, this, on the sides that hold it together, but it's all keyed together, and um, I really don't think it's going to go anywhere, so. Okay. And, uh, We need Ken here. <laughs> yeah. Need more milk. And it looks to be tail heavy. I think it's just heavy. <laughs> okay. uh, so first day test at the field of the Cub, 50% Cub. Uh, Right out, okay. okay. And the fuse split worked out all right. No, oh, it looks fabulous. And now I'm just, uh, Attaching the struts on the bottom. Hmm. Why do I only have one elevator? I'm going to say bad servo. Huh. Low speed flutter. Zero, actually. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much mass to that rudder, it just yeah. b -b 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 bounces. Still climbing. Still need more down thrust. Way cool, Jeff. Way cool. Yeah, no problem slowing it down. No. I you can walk faster. I just said to Dave, there's nothing you'll ever need flaps for. <clears throat> so just doing a bit of field maintenance this morning. Um, notice a bit of spots where I didn't adhere the covering quite perfectly. So I thought I'd better catch it before the covering rips off in the wing midair. It wouldn't be a good thing. Uh, I've actually done that before. 
you know, one of my iMac planes at an iMac contest was making a weird noise and uh, it uh, brought it down and we tried to figure out what it was and we thought maybe it was a motor or something weird, got back up again, flew again, did a 45 up line and the entire covering on the top of the wing ripped off one side. So I'm a little bit uh, paranoid about uh, covering coming loose so I notice on the leading edge a couple of little spots that uh, that uh, could use a better tacking so but I think it's good they actually have a cross uh, crosswind runway here but it's only about 150 feet long so be a little tight Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'd like to direct your attention to Show Center. You're seeing a scale club cub. It's being flown by Jeff Dreyer from the ground. There's no pilot in the aircraft itself, of course. This is a 50% scale J3 cub. It has an electric 10 horsepower motor and weight has about 9 pounds of lithium batteries. This is done in the traditional hazel Sega color scheme. And uh, here today we have uh, Larry, who's going to talk to us a little bit about some of these radio-controlled aircraft today. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Jeff is uh, just about to do a uh, roll there with his uh, cooked wing cup. And uh, it's, uh, like I mentioned, it's a 50% scale. He's doing a hammerhead stall there with uh, his cup. That's cool. And, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, the construction of this aircraft? How long did it take for him to build it, first of all? Well, it took Jeff about two years to build it from scratch. This isn't a kit. He had to go out and, uh, I was going to say, cut the trees down, but uh, just about that. Uh, it's, uh, he does another roll again. But about two years in the making, and uh, he uh, built it basically in his basement, and assembled it in his amazing room. All right. Looks like Jeff is just about to touch down his, his cup there. Can it fly very, very slowly? I think he's going to be okay as long as he doesn't hit that big cement thing. Oh, yeah. look at that, look at that. And well done. Nice. Well done. Oh. Save the prop. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well done, Jeff. During the Second World War, 431 Squadron completed 2,600 operational missions.